The next chapter is origins, the mysterious uh, basis of where all this stuff comes from. We're going to start thinking about evolution, the ultimate origin of all life on Earth. And, you know, the central puzzle here is just how does how does anything ever change uh, from one form to another? And I think this is such a barrier to understanding how evolution can work because you look at these kind of diagrams, you know, these kind of classic evolution type of diagrams. And, you know, it's like a fish gives birth to something that's not a fish. Uh, hmm? How does that work? Why, how could that possibly happen? You know, how does something evolve and change in its such a dramatic way that looks so different? Uh, it just seems impossible at the, on the surface of it. And I think it, that is the number one thing that we're going to focus on is understanding how that can happen. So we have lots of examples of these kinds of diagrams of kind of over time evolution happening in some way. Plenty of funny memes have been developed around that. But uh, there's two things I think that are super important. Uh, one that everybody kind of appreciates, which is that it takes an incredibly long time for this evolutionary process to take place. So it's a very gradual process. Uh, it takes place over many, many iterations, and it's just really hard for our brains to understand how something can operate over such a long time period. And, you know, you see this on geological timescales. Uh, you go look at the Grand Canyon and, you know, this huge thing is carved by, you know, this really, really slow process uh, operating over thousands and thousands of years. And, yeah, it's just hard to understand that as a human. Um, but I think there's another thing, again, this thing about the shape of these organisms that we really can understand pretty straightforwardly. Just with the, we just need the right uh, analogy to understand it. So first of all, uh, we know, everybody knows that our bodies are made of cells, okay? And we don't really see these cells. We can't really see these cells with the naked eye. And so we don't think of ourselves as being made of cells because that's weird. Um, but here, here's, you know, one of these pictures shows you a picture of frog cells and another shows you a picture of human cells, right? You can't tell the difference. We don't know which is which. And if you think about and understand that organisms are made of cells, then things start to make a little bit more sense, okay? And we can use an analogy by way of Lego to really understand this. So uh, the key idea here is that if you just have a bunch of building blocks, different kind of, in this case, plastic Lego blocks, uh, you can build all kinds of different things that look very different, right? All these different uh, animal shapes from the same parts, okay? And those parts are these cells. And once you start to realize that and really think about that's how, you know, bodies are made, organisms are made, then you're like, well, yeah, okay. So all you have to do in the case of Lego is use a different instruction set, okay? The booklet, literally, right? And, and if you follow a different set of instructions, you get a different animal. And that is exactly what happens in development uh, and as an organism is formed from cells, those individual cells, those building blocks, as they divide, there is a booklet, it's called the DNA, that determines how each of those little parts is assembled to create different shapes. And as you can maybe understand with Lego, if you change that program, that, that instruction book in just little ways, you get these very different things, right? And so it's all about that kind of process of where you add the next brick that determines the final outcome. And that's exactly what DNA controls in the context of the developmental process. And once you start to really understand that that's how things are built and that it's made out of these basic parts, it's actually really easy to understand how you can get these very different shapes. Um, and in fact, if you look at kind of accidents of nature, uh, there's some kind of bizarre looking, kind of gruesome uh, videos on YouTube that you can look up. Um, you can see plenty of examples of these kind of genetic mutation uh, kind of uh, uh, organisms that are formed. And that's just one generation. Uh, so this developmental process can definitely go kind of be very different. 
And the idea, in fact, that it's so consistent, you know, from person to person is actually kind of amazing, uh, just given how many parts we have and how much those parts, you know, need to get kind of coordinated and organized. Uh, it's, it's just mind bending that, that, you know, there aren't way more mistakes <laughs> during the developmental process. So that's uh, one way to think about it. But nevertheless, small changes in those instructions can really result in big changes in the observed uh, kind of organismic level, you know, body shape outcome. Sexual reproduction, as we'll see, the instruction booklet is getting constantly remixed and changed. And that instruction booklet can kind of reconfigure those parts in different ways. It almost has to happen, right? It just makes so much sense. You can see this phenomenon unfolding be before your very eyes in some fabulous work by Jeff Kloon and colleagues uh, looking at evolutionary development on a computer, right? So we can use simulations as we do with many things to understand complex processes that are hard to understand in nature because they take place over this huge long time period. But you can kind of speed this process up and see it operating in, in perceptible time that we can understand. Uh, and so I really encourage you to click on this. We'll have that link in the uh, more information uh, on the video. So you can kind of click on it there. I won't go through it at this point, but I strongly encourage you to check that out. It's it's really compelling. And one thing to emphasize, despite the fact that we always show these kind of progressive diagrams of, you know, going towards this kind of more optimal being, um, it's not really an optimization process. Uh, it's just, you know, basically survival, right? And that's it. And so whoever survives and reproduces kind of gets to determine, you know, the next generation, right? It's just this continued great chain of being. And, and again, it's kind of mind bending to, to really imagine, you know, if you keep tracing your parents, your parents, literally your parents, all the way back, their parents, their parents, et cetera, keep going back, you go all the way back. I mean, it's just this great chain of being, you go all the way back. It's just, it, it it's boggles the imagination. <laughs> even more so than Bieber himself. So anyway, the key point is that, uh, you know, this, this process doesn't, isn't directed. It's just, it's just all determined by who gets, who survives, who reproduces. Um, and so not everything is optimal in the final product. Uh, we have plenty of examples of that.